Hello and welcome back to another round of Forgotten Oak 2. We are on the CMP map test event and this is Irrawaddy River and I'm with a lot of people so uh, Watchtowers, Tupfan, Hawk, Blender, Knockburst, Ranch, Papillon. Did I forget anybody? No, no should be all. Hello. Okay. Except not not worse is not here. Oh. <laughs> hey, this this gate building thing is new. Yeah, I've got a new number five infield. Mm -hmm. Jungle carbine, so this is oh, pretty cool. Yeah. This is our first time. Yeah, this is the, the it's, it's the the standard rifleman weapon now, right? Yeah, it's made my by Matt Baker. Oh cool. I think that's the that's the jungle infield, right? And also Direct. very different is that uh, I thought that in the previous versions the flags were Japanese from the start. Or am I remembering it wrong? Oh, this they might have been turned around a lot. <laughs> yeah, we've we've gone through a lot of iterations, so I think that they're all gray now, and uh, we've definitely taken some of the feedback and made some changes here. So uh, hopefully everything runs good. Uh, my FPS seems good at the moment. Yeah, the FPS are way better on the last test. Boom. Okay. I just used the road, uh, the rope bridge. <coughs> the number five sounds uh, suspe suspiciously like the number four. Does it use it uh, the exact same round, or is it like smaller? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question, but we probably want to give it a slightly yeah, it's probably varied sound. It's the same, it was anyways. based on the number four, so... Um, I uh, have to admit that I'm not really so much into rifles after the number four. I know uh, about the number three and the SMLE, SMLE and uh, stuff like that, but not the number five. It's not my area of expertise. Was it a little shorter or something? Or was that different? Yeah, yeah it's, it's shorter. Uh, it's sort of a carbine. Yeah, the sights on it are fantastic. There's no missing once you put it on a target, which is very nice. Okay, we have to get back now because the Japanese... Oh, here's a... Here we have a texture seam. Who made this, by the way? Uh, Papillon usually works on this one. Ah, uh, okay. Dice made this map. Yeah, I know. Well, it was in the uh, free to play. play for free. Yeah. Or, uh, free play to play or whatever. Yeah, I play for free. Oh, really? Is that where that this came from? Okay, gotcha. It's been changed a lot, but... Yeah, yeah. the play for free version ended in the... between E and F. Everything east of F was not in the play for free version. Yeah, there's been a lot of debate about this map over the time that it's been in, within the camp uh, group here as far as how the game should play out and flags and the vehicles and uh, I think this last iteration we decided that the tanks just don't fit the map and they are just a little too awkward to get around. Uh, well, I think that's a good decision. Yeah, thanks to some uh, good videos by player. I think uh, we got some really good feedback and uh, definitely implemented some of your ideas, so thank you for that. Ha! Yeah, well, no problem. I had fun doing it, so... Oh, no way! Fuck! And I'm out of grenades! Shit! <laughs> that big jungle tree still look weird on this map. Yeah, they look kind of foxy. The lev level or detail, um, yeah, they don't switch right there, correct? I mean, I don't think it's the tree, because I have those on the, the Banachuan map, but they don't have that look. Yeah, it depends on the settings. Are shorter. Yeah, it's a close disk percentage. You can set it for each map, and the, it was 
lowered a lot to save FPS on this map. What but we it's probably yeah, it's probably Let's see where they are. <laughs> Nockworth said that he is glitching yeah. through boxes at camp, and I'm at camp now, so I'm searching for the boxes. They are not here. Looks Sorry. like Japanese have the temple locked down pretty well, but we've got them otherwise surrounded, so we'll see what happens here in this moment. No, this box is also okay. Maybe here? Oh, this... yeah. I'm sorry, but this mortar pit thing, it looks so weird with all the boxes stacked around in half a circle li around it. It's, uh, if I were the mortar guy, I would not do that. Take a picture. Now I'm recording everything, so... I can also take a, a picture, but... Yeah, we can definitely come back and watch, and that was the whole point of why we wanted to invite you today to join us and after some footage. Yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, this is uh, a kind of ideal because this combines uh, several things that I really like to do, like playing Forgotten Oak 2, uh, testing stuff and uh, making videos. Um, yeah, and, and right after the mortar pit I also found a nice machine gun position which is useless. Well then it's not so nice. It's it's very glitchy and well, you'll see. And uh, right, also, it also is not. Uh, it's it's floating in the air. The machine gun itself. Oh uh, yeah, there's a few of them on here. Somebody already reported. There's something to do with the way Papillon does his maps. He always ends up with stuff floating like that. <laughs> What's this? Well, we're all guilty of that. Come on, Mister Floating Wire. <laughs> yeah, okay, there's that. Are you now uh are you guys now calling each other names for uh for your uh for your famous bugs or what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Gravity. But now like Papion does so many tournament maps. Uh, usually when he like copy and paste the GPO, it'd be like all oh, the pickup kits are under the ground. <laughs> and do not forget the good old mirror sun. Yeah, on this map, because we played in the tournament so much, I keep looking for a rally point. Just instinctively. That's an interesting point that you bring up, because uh, newer games are definitely going that route. Uh, Hell Let Loose, which I enjoy a lot uh, in the times that FH2 is dead, uses uh, outposts. And they also use a um, theme level command post, and uh, that allows the whole team to spawn in. It's questionable on whether or not that should be a thing. Maybe only the squad should be allowed. I don't know. Claire, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, in, in a spawning mechanic, you mean? Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. So like an outpost that a squad can spawn on, independent from the actual squad leader, and then a team-based uh, outpost that the entire team can spawn on anywhere it's placed. Yeah, and who places those? Uh, only the squad leaders and the commander in Hell Let Loose, for an example, can, can place those. Okay. Uh, well, what I like about the uh, the rally points that you have in post scriptum is that the squad leader can uh, join in on the fight. Because uh, in FH2 the squad leader is a spawn point. And that's right, sometimes that so important that, uh, that you rather not participate in the fight. Um, because then the you die and uh, your guys can't spawn on you anymore. But... Um, uh, the the pace of Forgotten 2 is very fast. It's a lot faster than Postscriptum. I can tell right. you that the first times I played Postscriptum, I really had to get used to the slow pace. And um, uh, the slow pace allows you to have guys building a rally point. Mm -hmm. How? Uh, oh, that's a team kill. Um... And I don't think that, uh, and the, n uh, for example, on a map like this, um, this is so fast. You go from flag to flag in seconds. Uh, 
it's kind of useless to to spend time to build a, a rally point because the the normal flags have enough places to spawn. That's the second team kill, Garul. Jesus Christ! Well, now, do you, do you know we use uh, rally points in, in the tournament. Yeah, I know. F eight two. And for much bigger maps. Be good so, for you know, Slayer's point is is well received there. That you know, it, it probably could definitely depend on the map, but on this one, it would not necessarily be useful. But uh, it's interesting to see that the trend, as far as newer games go, are using rally points yep. and also team rallies. Yeah, it's, it's it's not like a bad and uh, like it's a bad mechanic. It's just that I think that if you want, ow, uh, uh, if you want to use it, then you need uh, a certain pace and a certain map size. And uh, there's lots of maps in Forgotten 2 which are definitely too small for uh, a system like rallies. But for example, on a map like uh, Alan Halfa, I could picture a rally system. But, uh, yeah. Jesus Christ. I think the biggest problem would be with the public community just having them uh, be that coordinated to actually place a rally. Yeah, you know, when you're a squad leader, you're already a spawn point. You don't have to do anything other than, like, say hide. Sometimes player makes a really good hide in a uh, tournament. But yeah, I mean, as the squad leader right now, for example, I am not really able to participate as much. I'm rather kind of hiding and allowing my squad to do the work. So, if you yeah, a map like right, this I might benefit from turning the squad leader spawn off. Yeah, uh, we have uh, we have had one version of Anktoville, and on that map we had a spawn APC, and okay, yeah. then you could not, I think. I th I'm not sure if squad leader spawn was disabled by then, but uh, you could also spawn on the APC. And um, yeah, I remember that, yeah. That was not a, a big success. It was not like everybody really thought it was a better system. Now, yeah, immediately players. That is you're going to get somebody who drives it needlessly away. Yeah, but it was also it also felt a bit. Um, uh, it felt super gamey, like you drive the truck into the back right. of the map, everybody spawns there, game over. And that that totally defeated the, the, the whole frontline feel. And uh, that that was what that was what was good about Fukuna 1, because then you just had to spawn at a flag and there were spawn waves and uh, the waves were representing waves of reinforcements and uh, that was actually not so bad. Ow. So, um, uh, and it was also more World War II because this squad leader spawn, uh, they made it in Battlefield 2, but it also fits Battlefield 2 better because it's modern warfare. And modern warfare is a lot more sneaking around than forming front lines like uh, in the 40s. Okay, so... I kind of found myself at a little good spot here that's in between a couple flags and it seems to be working out. And uh, the, the the problem with uh, the map sizes and, and uh, the whole thing that I, s I said before is that um, if you implement several systems then it's gonna be super inconsistent and then uh, people would have to remember oh this is this map, it has this kind of spawn uh, system and that just sucks. You need one spawn system that's consistent throughout the mod or the game. Uh, so that uh, everything is clear uh, to new players what they can expect. So if you do squad, sp squad leader spawn on one map, rally points on another, uh, spawn vehicles on a third, and only spawning on flags on the fourth map, then the mod game is just gonna be a mess. In my opinion. Haha, <laughs> we killed each other. That's kind of a fun feature of the game is that simultaneous kills can happen. But yeah. It was definitely not a thing in a lot of games for a very long time. No, uh, you can do it in Rising Storm 2 when you use mm -hmm. the flamethrower. 
Uh, you can also do it in the World War One games I play, uh, Verdun and Tannenberg. You can also kill each other there. No problem. I saw a couple of videos. Yeah, I saw a couple of your videos. Those uh, games have some really nice uh, visuals. Yeah. Yeah, the, the the biggest problem of those World War One games is the uh, is the Unity engine because the Unity engine uh, has some really wonky properties. Interesting, they went with Unity. Yeah, and I'm not sure why they used Unity because it's uh, it's not like uh, well the d the biggest uh, advantage of Unity is that it's multi-platform, but uh, that is it's very true. it's not like that the those games are going to be played on phones, tablets, um, etc. Uh, with crossplay. So why would you do that? Wow. That was a super heavy team kill. What's interesting is uh, a newer game that's uh, based on the American Civil War, War of Rights, is using the Cry Engine, and yeah. uh, they're counting 150 simultaneous players, uh, with, uh, no latency issues. So, uh, very interesting that uh, that's the route that they went, and uh, I was pretty surprised to see that 150 simultaneous players could uh, be possible. I don't know if they're going to trim that down as they progress through their development or if they plan on doing a 75 versus 75, but either way, that's a very large amount of players. Mm -hmm. What is the Mountain Blade engine use? I mean, they do events with 200 players. I've been part of that. They do line battles. Yeah, I'm not so sure on that one. Yeah, the mm -hmm. Napoleonic uh, Wars mod. Yeah, I only heard about the name. That was pretty fun, but they're really strict. You gotta act like a Napoleonic soldier or they ban you or something. <laughs> oh yeah, you have to speak French? <laughs> Maybe. You, you have to speak French have and to have uh, scurvy. You march in formation. <laughs> Did you, you uh, fire out of formation, they, they ban you from the event. Wow. Oh, it's an event. Yeah, yeah but it would uh, happen like every week, and there would be several. And there were lots of people doing it. If it's, it's if it's As like a reenactment event, I can imagine that they have some rules. Yeah, like that. You have to like practice with your regiment during the week and learn how to march formation. formation. Oh, very cool. That's a little stop the gaming is heading that direction. Did you put Tulagi 64s next? Did you yeah, um, yeah, did you that. did you yeah, hear about like that uh, did you hear about that guy in Russia? He yeah, was a like coming up. He was a Napoleonic uh, reenactor, but he uh, he got arrested while he was dressed up as his uh, character <laughs> because he had uh, he had murdered his girlfriend in kind of a gruesome way. But, oh my uh, dear lord! Okay, I'm stopping laughing right now. <laughs> yeah, but but. Uh, that must be so super surrealistic when you're uh, oh, yeah, when you're a story cop. historian. Yeah, the historian. Yeah, he, uh, you're arresting a guy that's dressed up like an 18th, 18th century soldier, and you find out he, that he chopped up a girl. That's so super sick. Was he going like? Mom. Yeah, he was. Uh, they they used to attend parties, and she would dress up like uh, uh, Marie Louise. And he would uh, he would be uh, like a French officer, a and uh, and then they would uh, speak French, and and uh, this was totally weird. Yeah, it was. She was younger. I read about it. She was mm -hmm. like twenty twenty eight, and he was like fifty. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like this map is wrapping up with the uh, British kind of taking firm control of this one, and uh, I think that the, the flags are laid out in a very reasonable fashion here so I think that this is just good old teamwork and uh, yeah. coordination versus yeah, any kind in, of uh, yeah, I think regular the allied team is really strong right now yeah in in earlier iterations the the allied had a really real big trouble to cap uh, to hold uh, more than three flags at one point so I think the the chatter about the map and the balance and stuff like that has obviously calmed down. So I think that uh, I think we actually finally found that little sweet spot that we're looking for here. Yeah. 
Yeah, I still think that you don't really need the bridge area, but overall I think it's uh, this is better than before. Wouldn't they not be like too small without the bridge? No, not really. You could just uh, you could just make the river the the border. I think that's GG. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, a British victory this time. Uh, that's it for this round. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.